A group of spies once tried to trap Jesus, asking, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar? In other words, are you a revolutionary, opposed to Roman rule, or are you a compromiser, supporting Roman rule? He refuses to be tricked into giving a simplistic answer, and instead asks for a coin, asks his own question, and then famously declares, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and render unto God what is God's. Now, we hear those words with our Western mindsets and think, ah, easy, let Caesar look after all the practical, logistical, political stuff, and let God and his people get on with all the spiritual stuff. The Sunday morning stuff, prayers, hymns, invisible things, that's God's turf. Taxation, roads, healthcare, that's Caesar's turf. How convenient to have that separation. None of that awkward mixing of religion and politics. But for those listening to Jesus in the first century, there's not a chance they would have heard Jesus' statement that way. For the Hebrews, body, soul, and spirit were not separate entities. Life was one. For example, the temple wasn't just the place where you worshipped. It was a civic center looking after many aspects of communal life. For the Hebrews, their religious leaders were also their political leaders. So when we talk about what is God's and what is Caesar's, we're not talking about two separate realms where God has jurisdiction in the sacred and Caesar has jurisdiction in the secular. It's not like this. It's more like this. Caesar has a small delegated area of authority within the context of God's overall authority. He is the supreme creator who is reconciling all things in heaven and earth to himself. Jesus reiterated this when he told Pilate that he would have no authority unless it had been given you from above. Note that he doesn't dispute that Pilate has real authority, but he reminds him where it comes from. So God has an opinion on everything, including taxes, because he is in authority over all of it. As the ex-Dutch Prime Minister and theologian Abraham Kuyper said, there is not one square inch of creation over which the Lord Christ does not cry, it is mine. That's why he cares about things like the environment, war, education, and economics. And that's why we, as Christians on the left, care about them too. We need economic structures that reflect God's character, rather than conveniently keeping that part of life separate from his rule and reign. All through scripture, God makes it clear that he is the God of the underdog. He isn't biased towards the poor because he likes them more. He has to be biased to offset our selfishness. He isn't opposed to wealth creation, but he has some fairly serious things to say about how it should be used. And that's why taxes, like the Jubilee Principle, bring at least a little leveling of the land. God knows us too well and knows we need rhythms of giving rather than relying on our occasional and unreliable charity. Our attitudes to paying tax become corroded when we start to believe that our money is ours rather than a temporary gift to be stewarded for the good of all. And at a human level, we forget that our ability to earn money has been built on the shoulders of the bodies that a health service has kept healthy, an education system that has taught us, the roads that transported us, the internet we surfed, and the protection we enjoyed from the police and our armed forces. There is no such thing as a self-made man or woman. In the wake of Brexit and Trump, we've already forgotten how appalled we were on reading the Panama Papers, which detailed tax evasion on an industrial scale. And even when certain tax avoidance practices aren't illegal, we have to question how constructive they are. I mean, adultery isn't illegal either, but it can still negatively impact a community and society. So one of the things we're campaigning for as Christians on the left is a properly resourced, dedicated business unit in HMRC, folks who collect our taxes, to tackle corporate tax evasion. Estimates show that for every one pound we invested, we would get 10 pounds back. Donald Trump may think it's smart to not pay tax, but we think it's unpatriotic. And it would appear that many others now agree with us. What started as a little hashtag at a Christians on the Left event has become a major narrative used at every party conference. It's this sort of mustard seed kingdom influence we long to see more of. So add your voice to the Patriots Pay Tax campaign. 
like these people, why not share with us the reasons you are proud to pay tax? Let's change the narrative and let's bring righteousness and justice to a system crying out for it. Why don't you join the hundreds of passionate folks who have come on board in the last couple of years? Join us at Christians on the Left.